So variances, there's a few different types. We've got material variances. We've got labor variances. We have sales variances. And then we've got overhead variances. So we've got a lot of different types of variances. And variances simply represent differences between our budget and what actually ends up happening. <clears throat> And we use variances to help us to understand why things turned out differently than what we had budgeted for. And there's two primary types of variances that you're gonna see for all of the different types, those being materials, labor, sales, and overhead. And the two primary types of, of variances that you're gonna see <clears throat> include price, or rate variances, and then efficiency or usage variances. So the price and rate variances help us identify the effect of differences in price or rates or costs from what we budgeted for versus what we actually saw. <clears throat> So if we charge something, let's say that we sell something for more than we had budgeted for, this variance will catch that. Or if our variable overhead ends up being higher than we had anticipated, this variance will catch that. We then have the efficiency or usage variances, and these measure the, either the quantity of materials or <clears throat> the quantity of labor hours that were used in the production process. So what we're looking at is whether more or less labor hours were used. Uh, it could be more or less machine hours, more or less materials, but we're trying to get a gauge for how efficient or how much uh, resources we actually consumed during the period. So this focuses more on the quantity of what we used as opposed to the, the costs or the rates or the prices, all right? And these two types of variances are going to be present for all of our four different types of, of costs. <clears throat> Um, and <clears throat> for the exam, you're, you're not only are you going to have to understand how to calculate the variances, but you also have to be able to determine whether a variance is favorable or unfavorable. And that's pretty straightforward. You'll be able to tell before you even run the complete calculation. And I'll be pointing that out as we go. So we're gonna run through some basic examples and then we've got some questions to help us practice. And the examples we're using pull from this data sheet, okay? But this data sheet, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have, I have little snippets from it throughout the slides. So we'll be able to, to see the information we're pulling from. <clears throat> All right, so first and foremost, I want to introduce you to the variance framework. This will make your life so much easier when it comes to variances, okay? Now, the variance framework <clears throat> consists of three things. We've got our actual results on the left-hand side. We've got our budgeted results on the right-hand side. And then this right here is what we call the flexible budget. So our flexible budget uses actual quantities, but then it uses budgeted prices and budgeted costs. So we have our actual results, <clears throat> which represent what actually happened in terms of the quantity of resources we used and the prices and the costs that we you know, charged and incurred. And then over on the right side, we've got our pure budget. So this is the amount of materials and, and you know, resources that we anticipated we would need based off of how much we produced as well as the budgeted prices and the budgeted costs associated with what we used. Our flexible budget is kind of a marriage between these two things. It's partly, it, it, part of it comes from the, the actual side, 
because we use we we go off of the actual quantity of what we were able to uh to use or 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 to produce <clears throat> but we are pulling in budgeted prices and budgeted costs from our budget so it's it's a mix between these two things all right so that's that comes from our flexible budget now it's it's helpful for us if you look at the difference between these two, it's our price variance, right? For both of these, quantity is the same. The only difference between those two boxes is price, right? Because both of these are using actual quantity in the calculation. The only thing that's different is price. So our formula then is gonna be actual price minus standard price times actual quantity. That's our, our price variance formula that we're going to use. <clears throat> and then these two boxes over here, if you look at these, both of them use budgeted prices. The only difference is quantity. One uses actual, the other uses, uses standard. And another word for standard is budgeted, okay? So we've got our actual quantity minus our standard quantity times standard price. That's where we get our quantity variances from. And the, the reason we break it out like this is <clears throat> with our price variances, we want to isolate the impact of price and price alone. In other words, we want to say, okay, for the amount of materials that we ended up um, you know, actually using to produce our product, did we pay more or less than we thought given how much we actually bought, right? So we just want to look at fluctuations in price. <clears throat> now for the quantity variance, we want to look at whether we used more or less materials, right? Or more or less labor hours. Okay, so we're only focused on quantity. We don't care about price. That's why we use standard price in the formula. So let's go ahead and take a look at our materials here. So I'm gonna zoom out. Okay. So <clears throat> if we were to calculate the total actual cost for our materials, we could calculate that as follows. I actually used 4,000 units of material in my manufacturing process, and each unit cost me $4.75. That results in a total cost of $19,000. All right. Um, let me just move this up here to get out of the way. <clears throat> so that, that results in a total actual cost of 19,000. In other words, the total cost of the materials that I actually used uh, you know, in my production process was $19,000, okay? Now, for the amount of units that I actually ended up producing, I budgeted that I would use 4,750 units of material, and I budgeted that the price would be $5, okay? So that comes out to be a total price or total cost of $23,750. So I was budgeting to spend a total of $23,750, but I actually spent a total of nineteen k. So this is going to be favorable because I ended up spending less on materials than I thought. Okay. Now I want to break this into my two variances because this difference we're seeing here can partly be caused due to changes in price, right? So if my prices are more or less than I thought, that can impact this. But also, if I use more or less materials than I thought, that also has an impact. So that's what we're trying to break out here. Okay. So for my price variance, uh, let me go ahead and erase this. Actually, I'm going to bring this back down because I need the annotate feature. So let's take a look at the price variance. <clears throat> so my formula for the price variance is listed down at the bottom. Actual price minus standard price times quantity purchased. Okay. 
So all I'm doing is I'm taking the difference between these and I'm multiplying it by what I actually ended up buying. So at this point right here, we can tell whether it's favorable or unfavorable. And it's clearly favorable because I spent 25 cents less per unit of material than I had budgeted for. And I actually purchased 4,000. So my total variance is gonna be 1,000 favorable. Okay, so for your price variance, <clears throat> Um, all you're doing is you're just taking the difference between what you actually spent versus what you thought you were going to spend, and then you're multiplying that by the amount of stuff you actually bought. And if we come back up here, 1,000, there's our price variance. Okay, now let's move on to the materials or the usage variance. So our formula for that is listed down below, right? We're taking our actual quantity, so I actually used 4,000, but I budgeted 4750. So right away, we can tell this is favorable because I actually used less materials than I thought I was going to need for the amount of, of, of goods I was able to produce. And then I always want to make sure that I'm using my standard price. <clears throat> I use my standard price because I'm just trying to look and see if I end up using more or less materials than I thought, given what I budgeted for in terms of, of, of my pricing, how would, that, how would that impact the total cost of, of, of materials that I've used on my jobs? Okay, so we, we want to, we don't want to use our actual price here. We want to use the budgeted because what we're trying to isolate is the effect of using either more or less materials in the manufacturing process. And then we're saying, okay, I actually used 4,000 materials. I thought I was going to need 4750 and I budgeted for a price of $5 for each of these materials. So my, my total savings here is 3,750. That's, that's how we interpret that. <clears throat> All right, if we come back up now to the top, we have both our price variance and our usage variance. And what you'll notice is these two things add up to the total difference. So the total difference <clears throat> between actual and budgeted is $4,750. $1,000 of that difference is due to favorable changes in price, right? We ended up spending less for each unit of material than we thought. And then the rest of the difference comes from the fact that we just used fewer materials to produce the 750 units. And so those two things together form this total favorable variance that we're seeing here.